All right, guys, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the new 1.9.1 beta version of Serato Scratch Lite. Yes, it just seems not too long ago that the 1.9 version went final, uh, but we're moving along now and going on to the 1.9.1 version. 1.9.1 uh, is mainly just a maintenance release, a lot of bug fixes from the 1.9 version, uh, but there have been a few improvements, uh, especially with the SP6 sample player, uh, which was introduced in 1.9. Uh, that was one of the big new additions in 1.9. Uh, but it wasn't perfect. There's still a lot of uh, user requests and suggestions for it, and those have been addressed, uh, some of them at least, in the uh, this 1.9.1 version. So let's take a look at the new and improved SP6 sample player. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff going on now, and it looks quite different from the old 1.9 version. Uh, now in 1.9.1, uh, you'll be able to select over here, they see this little box, just click on that and this will bring up a menu that you can choose to select or deselect various things from the SP6 sample player. So now it's kind of like a modular GUI and you'll be able to pick or not pick which things you want shown or not shown. So I'm going to go through and just explain them again. Mode is the three different playback modes for the sample player. We have retrigger, uh, hold, and one shot. Uh, improved and added to the 1.9.1 version now are pitch sliders. This was a big request from the 1.9 version. Uh, there's no way to actually pitch the samples up or down. Uh, so now we have pitch sliders now on each of the six slots in the sample player. Uh, you can go plus or minus 8%. Uh, so this will make it much easier now to beat match uh, samples playing in the SP6 sample player to the regular songs playing in either deck and uh, at the top. Uh, so pitch sliders now on each of the sample players. Uh, we also have pitch bend buttons right here, plus or minus, and a key lock for each of the uh, sample slots. Uh, next in the list is the play from. Uh, this will give you the option now to select any of the five cue points or any of the nine stored loops to begin playing the sample from. Uh, if you watched my earlier video on 1.9.0, you may have remembered that you can only start a sample from either the first cue point or the first loop. Uh, well, now you can select any of the five cue points or any of the uh, stored loops to begin playing the sample from. Uh, next in the list is the overview, which is just the waveform overview. Uh, and then over next we have the level meters. These are the volume sliders and the gain knobs for each of the uh, sample slots. And then finally the LED uh, indicator levels. Uh, so yeah, so this is the big improvement in 1.9.1, it's just uh, more additions to the SP6 sample player. Uh, now, especially now with the pitch sliders, this is uh, uh, very much like having eight virtual decks in Scratch Live. Uh, there's still no automatic syncing of the SP6 slots to the sample players, uh, but the pitch sliders are a very welcome addition, I believe, and this is going to uh, truly open up a lot of doors now. Uh, there's already a couple other videos on YouTube of people. Uh, demonstrating this, so if you want to go check those out, please do. Uh, so, modular GUI now for the SP6 sample player, uh, pitch sliders, and uh, more options to begin playing from. Uh, so that's probably the biggest addition to the 1.9.1 version. Uh, some other minor things. Uh, for all you harmonic mixers out there, uh, you may remember that the key column was introduced in 1.9.0, uh, which is good and all. Uh, the problem is, though, when uh, you're playing a song on one of the regular decks and you're trying to search for your next song you might have not uh, remembered what the current song's key is so um, it's kind of hard to determine to try and find your next song that is harmonically compatible uh, well now when you if your songs are key then you have a, uh, a key in the key column uh, when you load a song to a deck now the key will be displayed up here at the top of the decks next to the BPM uh, so this will make it much easier now to uh, you know, when you're browsing to for your next track to play, you can see all oh, the songs in 2A. Uh, so, you know, find the next song would either be 1A or 3A or 2B. Uh, that's harmonically compatible. So, uh, key displayed now next to the BPM on top of the virtual decks. Uh, let me get those out. Uh, another little minor addition are the these little arrows right here. Uh, I know, very, very minor. But... Uh, Surprisingly, these were never in Scratch Live before, and you probably wouldn't even have noticed, but uh, now we have little scroll arrows now down here uh, to click instead of using the scroll wheel or uh, uh, your arrow keys. Um, also, one thing I wanted to mention about the sample player is you can now instant double 
uh, from a deck into the sample player slots or vice versa. So uh, that's really good, especially if you want to play with one turn table. Uh, so I'm going to demonstrate that. So let's just play a song and obviously just uh, make sure the instant double option is selected first of all in the setup menu and just simply drag it from right here into any of the available slots and it will begin playing. Let me get the overview on there so you can see that you can instant double it uh, basically to any of the available slots. Uh, likewise, you can also do it the other way around from any of the playing slots into a virtual deck. So just grab it up there and then we'll begin playing uh, instant double it right there like so. So that's pretty nifty indeed. Um, what else? There's a firmware update for you TTM57 users. This is the new firmware 3.2.0. Uh, this firmware update eliminates the dip in the crossfader. Uh, this is a very uh, long-standing issue that a lot of people complained about is when you have the crossfader curve setting set too slow there's about a minus three decibel uh, dip in the crossfader in the center. So a lot of people like didn't like that, especially for the people that mix with the crossfader. Well, that has been addressed and is fixed now with the new uh, TTM57 firmware update. Also, there's a new update if you use the SL3, which I have right now, is you can now select either 16-bit or 24-bit recording. Uh, in the auxiliary input, so you can choose to record your sets in either 16-bit or 24-bit. Uh, what else is new? Uh, oh yes, the Read iTunes Library. Now, this was a, caused a lot of confusion in the 1.9 version. It's so bad that I actually had to make a video on it, which I'm sure m most of you have seen. Is The iTunes Library is collapsed, uh, was collapsed in 1.9.0. So a lot of people were freaking out and thought they lost other playlists. I mean, all you had to do is click this little triangle right there in the main iTunes library. Uh, but it wasn't very obvious, so you know people freaked out. Oh my god, where did all my playlists go? Uh, well, they improved the color of it, made the triangle a little more obvious now. So if your playlists aren't showing up, just click right there. And that will collapse or uh, uncollapse your iTunes library. Uh, there's also been an improvement. Um, to the key lock algorithm in Scratch Live. Uh, you know, a lot of people uh, think it's not that great. I d personally don't use key lock, so I'm not sure how well it compares to the old version, but there is a new key lock algorithm that is supposedly supposed to sound better than the previous one. I don't know. Uh, I don't use key lock, as I mentioned, so I'll leave that up to you guys to determine. And also, uh, something else new in 1.9.1 .1 is the way cue points work now. And this is going to be borrowed from the NS7 and Serato Itch. Now, if you don't have any cue points set on your song, uh, if you may know the shortcut to set a cue point is Control plus uh, the number keys 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. Well, now all you have to do is just hit the number key without Control. So basically, if you want to set a cue point uh, that you currently don't have in any of the slots, so, it, so if I want to set the first cue point, and slot one on the left deck, all you have to do now is hit the one key and that will set a cue point. And then if you hit the one key again, it's just going to re-trigger it from uh, that cue point. So now you just have to hit the key, the number key once just by itself to set a cue point and then triggering it again will uh, re-trigger from that sample. Now a lot of people are 50-50 on this. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, so this will probably end up becoming an option in the setup menu. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, but basically, yep, that's it. Um, most of the improvements in 1.9.1. Uh, there's a lot of bug fixes and minor things I'm not going to get into. Uh, please read the release notes and the change log for full details of all the changes and bug fixes and whatnot. Uh, what you should read. Uh, but basically, yeah, that's it. So this is the first look at the new Serato Scratch Live 1.9.1 version. Uh, I'm going to post the link on where you can download this and try it out. But please remember, this is a beta version. This is not final, so uh, treat it as unstable. Don't use it at gigs. Back, back up all your data, blah, blah, etc., etc. You know the whole schmeal. Uh, but yeah, so here we go. This is the first look at the new Serato Scratch Live 1.9.1 version.